Hey guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at the OGO Alpha Convoy 320 laptop backpack. And I've used a few different OGO bags in the past and they've always had really good quality and a lot of good features. So I was really excited when they reached out to see if I wanted to check out one of the new bags that they released as part of their Alpha Convoy collection. So they were kind enough to send over the 320 backpack and I've been testing it out for the past couple of weeks. And overall, I have to say I've been really impressed with all the different features and style that the bag has to offer. I really like the kind of more tactical look that it has. So just a really solid all around EDC bag that's been a blast to use and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So let's just go ahead and jump in and take a closer look at the OGO Alpha Convoy 320 laptop backpack. So starting out with the outside, the look of the bag has definitely been one of my favorite things as I've been testing this out. The bag has a slightly tactical look, lots of pockets, and I really like this gray color that I have here. It's offered in a variety of different colors. You can get it in black, red, and a camo version in addition to the gray one that you see here. The bag is made out of a very durable feeling Corridor 600D polyester material that's made out of recycled plastic. So very cool to see Ojo trying to use some more sustainable materials. So far the polyester has felt pretty water resistant, but one of the biggest benefits I've noticed is that it's pretty light. Overall the bag when it's empty is only about two pounds, so it doesn't really add any extra heft well, you're filling it up with a bunch of different stuff. So really nice to see that. In addition to the polyester material, the bag has nice YKK zippers all around. So nice choice of materials and just a really lightweight and solidly built EDC bag. Here the bag has a 20 liter capacity, so it offers a fair amount of space to carry everything that you need for your day to day, but it is very slim. So even when it's filled up with a bunch of stuff, it doesn't really stick out. I really like how closely it hugs my back. One thing that I did notice about the slimness of the bag is that even though it gives it a nice silhouette while you're wearing it, it does make it a little bit harder to hold some of the bulkier items that I typically like to carry with me. And we'll dive into that a little bit more when I get into the main area of the bag. Continuing along the outside, I was happy to see that the bag has two external water bottle compartments. So as you can see here, I have the same water bottle that I've used in all my other daily bag videos and that fits in there easily. Nice amount of space offered by these compartments. They don't expand out or anything like that. So this is pretty much the volume that you get, but they do have plenty of space. As you saw, my water bottle fit in there very easily. They're nice and deep. I can fit my whole hand. If you have something like a tripod, you should be able to fit that okay. The bag also has two compression straps above the water bottle compartment. So if you have something a little bit taller, you will be able to kind of add that support. So if you have a taller tripod, this should be able to keep it in place. I also like the inclusion of these compression straps to be able to strap on something like a jacket or just be able to compress the bag down if it's not that full. Some additional things to call out here in the water bottle compartments are this little ventilation hole that it has on the bottom, which is going to be very helpful if you have a wet item in here or you have a spill or something to allow that to air out. And then there's also an additional compression strap on the water bottle compartments to allow you to tighten down whatever you put into this area or to just to add some more flexibility and compressing the bag down or even hanging some additional gear. On the bottom, you have two additional adjustable straps that you could use to attach something like a yoga mat. I like that they have these little plastic clips here to help keep the straps in place. So if you're not using them, you don't have a lot of straps flopping around. So nice versatility added by these here on the bottom. Next up, the bag has a few rows of Molly webbing to clip on some additional accessories. So what I currently have here is my hero clip, which I used to hang my bag off the ground. In addition to being able to clip things onto here, OGO does sell a few accessories that are meant to pair with this webbing to be able to expand the capacity of the bag. So they have a few kind of detachable pockets that you could use to hold electronics and such. One thing that I did like is that it is compatible with other Molly accessories that I currently own, such as this pouch from Orca Tactical. So with this Molly system that it has here, I was able to easily attach it using the webbing and it holds on very securely to just add some extra pockets if I wanna carry some additional items. And if not, I can take that off and just keep a cleaner look. Moving on to the straps and the back paneling, the bag has been very comfortable to wear. I really like how the straps were implemented here. They're nice and thick, as you can see, very soft. They have a nice meshy material on the inside to help prevent moisture from building up. They have a nice width, so if you're carrying a lot of weight, they won't dig into your shoulders. They also include an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute some of the weight. And in general, the shape has been very comfortable on my shoulders. I really like this slight contour that it has here. As far as the back paneling, this has also been very comfortable. Same soft padding that you saw on the strap, similar meshing material as well to help prevent moisture from building up. So really soft, comfortable padding here. The bag has been very comfortable to wear all around. You have a nice little air channel here to help provide a little bit of elevation and prevent your back from getting quite as sweaty throughout the day. I do wish that there had been maybe an additional air channel or just a little bit of extra elevation, but because of the meshing material and the soft padding, the bag has still been great. On the back, the bag also has this nice suitcase pass-through if you wanna rest this on your carry-on if you're traveling with multiple bags. I really like how this is implemented here. Very easy to slip over the handle of your suitcase, lots of space. And I like that the pass-through itself has some additional padding to make it a little bit softer as it's resting on your back. And so jumping into the different compartments of the bag, I was very impressed with how many different organizational options were offered throughout. 
So starting with the front here, there's just a simple quick access compartment with a nice YKK zipper. It has a little zipper garage here to help provide up some additional protection against the rain. And so opening this up, very kind of slim, simple compartment. So in here, I currently have just my Apple Magic Mouse. And then I also have a lightning cable to charge my phone. On the inside here, there's also a little lanyard with a clip that you can use to attach your keys to. I really like how this clip is implemented here. It's nice and thick. It feels very durable. It can easily rotate. I wish the lanyard was a little bit longer, but it's still easy enough to get your keys on and off. Currently what I have here is just my Gerber Dime multi-tool with a, an S carabiner. No other internal organization on the inside of this compartment, but as you can see, a nice amount of space, good amount of volume. It goes down a fair amount. I can easily fit my whole hand in here. And on the inside, the back is actually pretty soft. It's not mesh or anything like that, but I really like the material that's used here on the inside. If I put something a little more delicate in here, I do feel like it's gonna be fairly safe from scratches. On top of that, you have another quick access compartment on the front here. This one is a little bit taller, so it goes all the way down to about the same point as the front quick access compartment. And one thing about these two compartments is that they do rest on top of each other. They kind of share space. So if you put something a little bit bulkier in here, it is gonna reduce the amount of volume that you have in the front compartment. So you have to be a little bit kind of strategic with where you place everything throughout your bag. But because this is a little deeper, I can easily fit something like my Kindle that fits in there comfortably so I can grab that quickly throughout the day. And then I don't really have much else in the bottom portion of this compartment, but I could have easily fit a Moleskine notebook or something a little bit taller. This compartment does have some internal organization. There's a slit pocket here near the top with a nice amount of volume where I currently have my Blue Pop portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank. So just a very simple slip compartment to help kind of prevent everything from just sifting down to the bottom of the deep area here. Next to that slip pocket, there's a simple slot for something like a pen or a stylus. This is actually a pretty deep compartment here. The stylus that I have kind of gets lost in there if I push it all the way down. So you should be able to hold something a little bit taller if you have an Apple Pencil or something like that. So just another nice simple compartment. It's nice to be able to spread everything out throughout your bag if you're somebody who likes a specific spot for everything. Next up is a laptop compartment and I really like how this was implemented here. Nice well covered YKK zipper on this compartment to help keep your device protected from the rain. I do wish this ceiling had been used on the rest of the zippers of the bag. So the main compartment not quite as well protected as the laptop area but this is likely where your most expensive item will be. So it's nice that that additional protection was at least added here. And so opening the laptop compartment up, very easy to get to. I really like the red inner lining to make it easy to see everything on the inside. The compartment is nicely padded. The back is that similar soft material that we saw on the quick access compartments on the front. So I really like how well protected the device feels. In this compartment, you actually have a separate tablet slot. So I'll go through that first. And currently what I have here is just my iPad mini 2, which fits in there very easily. You could definitely fit a full size tablet in there. I don't know if you could fit the 12 inch iPad Pro, but a 10 inch tablet should fit in there very comfortably. Really like how this sleeve has been added here. It adds a nice amount of separation from your laptop. It's not quite as padded as I would like to see, but it does offer that soft material that you see all over this compartment. So it definitely feels like it's gonna keep your device well protected. And then the laptop compartment itself offers a nice amount of padding here on the back. Currently what I have in here is my 13 inch MacBook Pro, but you can definitely fit up to a 15 inch laptop. You see there's plenty of leftover space here at the top. It also comes out a fair amount. So if you have a little bit of a thicker device, you should have plenty of space to make that fit. So pulling that out, you can get a view of the compartment when it's empty. And so really like this material and padding offered here. One thing to note is that the compartment is not elevated off the bottom of the ground. So if you do place your bag down on the ground, you wanna be careful because your laptop can make contact with the ground. I placed my bag down a little bit harder and definitely felt the laptop touching. So just one thing to keep in mind. But besides that, the compartment does a great job of protecting the devices that I have in it. Moving on to the main compartment. This is a nice top loading bag. The compartment opens up nice and wide to allow you to see everything that's on the inside pretty easily. And so as I mentioned earlier, because of the slimness of the bag, it's not gonna be great for holding a bunch of bulkier items. So if you're somebody who likes to take gym clothes and maybe a pair of shoes or a thicker lunchbox or a bunch of camera gear, you may have a little bit of trouble kind of arranging everything in the bag because of the slimness. But for most EDC uses and for my purposes, I've really enjoyed kind of how this main compartment is laid out. So the first thing I have here is my Beats Studio Wireless 3 with a hard case, which I've been testing out. These are a little bit bulkier than the Beats Solo 2 that I've been using for the past couple of years. So that definitely takes up a lot of space in the compartment. And then next up, I have my GORUCK wired app with all my dongles and cables and smaller accessories. And then I have a full-size Moleskine notebook. And then I also have my Levitate portable standing desk. And then I also have a simple folder here for my papers and receipts and things like that. So here you can get a clear view of the main compartment now that it's empty. So very simple, good amount of space here. 
if you did want to put some bulkier items they do have space but the one thing is it'll compromise how you can use the rest of the compartments in the bag so if you pack this compartment out fully it'll be very hard to use these quick access compartments as they'll just be very tight on the back of the main area here, there is a larger mesh zippered compartment that is elevated off the ground. So if you have something a little more delicate like a hard drive, you can throw that in here or some of your tech accessories and that opens up easily and you can reach down to get them. As you can see, the compartment comes out a nice amount. So just a nice additional bit of organization here in the main area. This compartment I will typically leave empty as I don't like things sticking out and pushing everything forward. I like all my stuff to kind of lay flat against the main area, but it's nice that you have that additional pocket if you need it. On the flap, there's another simple zippered compartment that has plenty of space. It goes down really deep, almost to the bottom of the bag. So I could have put my notebook in here or, and I also like how much it comes out. So if I have some bigger accessories, like maybe something like my GoPro or a larger mouse or even my laptop charger, I'm gonna be able to throw that in there and be able to find it very easily in this main area. So really like the use of these larger, simple compartments. Reminds me a lot of the Bellroy Classic Plus that we looked at. So just a really useful compartment. Currently what I have in here is my sunglasses with their case. And then I also have my UTEC wireless charger for my phone. And so even with those items in there, just tons of space. I really like how this compartment was implemented. And in general, just a really solid, versatile and lightweight EDC bag is gonna work great in a variety of environments. And so to wrap up, it's been a blast testing out the OGO Alpha Convoy 320 laptop backpack over the past couple of weeks. The bag has some really great organizational options. It's been very comfortable to wear and I just really like the overall style that it offers. And so you can purchase this on Amazon or an OGO site for about $110. And to me, this is a good price for such a solidly built and versatile daily bag. Very comparable to a lot of the other daily bags of a similar capacity that we featured on the channel. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag that this reminded me of was the Recycled Firefighter 24 Hour Backpack. That one doesn't have quite the same organizational options as this, but it is a very solidly built EDC bag that has a similar capacity. It doesn't have quite the tactical look. It's a little bit more simple looking, but it's been one of my favorite EDC bags to use. It's very comfortable and solidly built. And that one's gonna be a little bit more expensive than this and it's a little harder to get, but it is made in the US. So if that's something that's important to you, it might be a good option to check out. Another bag that this reminded me of was the 511 Rapid Quad Zip Pack, which we looked at a little while back. That also has a very kind of tactical feel. It's been an awesome EDC bag to use. It's a little bit bigger than this at 27 liters versus the 20 liters that you see on this bag. That one's gonna be a little bit more affordable. It's gonna come in at around $100, maybe a little bit less, depending on where you're able to find it on Amazon. And that's just been a great all around bag. It also has kind of the molly webbing on the outside. And if you're looking for something with maybe a little bit more capacity, that's kind of a similar style, that's gonna be a great option to check out. Another bag I would recommend taking a look at would be something like the Able Carry Daily Active Bag, which we featured a little while ago. And that's been one of my favorite kind of all around EDC bags. Just a very simple style and a little bit less organizational options than this, but a little bit lighter. It has some really great weather resistance and just a really sleek look. So if you're interested in checking that one out, I'll definitely make sure to include a link in the description below so you can see how the two compare against each other. The next bag that this reminded me of was the Bellroy Classic Plus backpack, which was a really solid kind of all around EDC bag, just like this one. Lots of great organizational options, a very premium feeling build. It's a little bit more expensive than this, coming in at closer to $200 but it does have a little bit more capacity. And I just really love how the organization was laid out in that bag. So if you're looking for something that doesn't have quite the same tactical look as this, but similar organizational style and might have a little bit more of a premium build, I definitely recommend checking out the video that we did for the Bellroy Classic Plus. And then the last bag that I'll mention here is the GoRug GR1, which of course is one of my favorite EDC bags of all times. It's one of the ones that I use most often, but it does come in at a very, very heavy price point close to $400 or 300, depending on the different discounts that you're able to get, but still a lot more expensive than the 110 that this bag costs here. And so I think this is gonna be a great alternative for people that really like that kind of tactical look and are looking for something that they might be able to customize with different pouches and like the look of the Molly webbing, but don't wanna spend quite as much on something like the GoRug GR1. Obviously that bag is gonna feel a little bit more durable. It has a lifetime warranty. And if you're willing to invest in something like that, it's gonna be a fantastic option. But if you're working with a little bit of a tighter budget, and you want something that's very solid and versatile and has a similar style, the OGO 320 backpack is gonna be a good alternative to that. And so with all that being said, I've just been really impressed with how solid of an EDC bag the OGO Alpha Convoy 320 backpack has been. And if you're looking for a very solidly built, lightweight, comfortable bag that you might be able to customize a little bit that has a very nice look, I definitely recommend you check this one out. And so I wanna go ahead and thank the company again for sending the bag for me to test out. It's been a great experience. And if you guys have any questions on the different features that we covered throughout the video, please let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video useful, please go ahead and give us a like. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And thank you guys so much.